Good afternoon, this is Mrs. Akla, your behavior specialist. I'm gonna be recording a few short videos for parents. I know that this is a different and difficult time for a lot of you. Um, it can be challenging to motivate your child to want to do schoolwork and to keep them engaged. So I'm gonna share with you a few of the strategies that we have in the classroom. and I'm gonna demonstrate how you can use them in your home. The first rule of behavior is always, has always been, and always will be consistency. You have to say what you mean and mean what you say. This means that we're not giving empty threats. I'm not threatening to take away things that I'm not willing to take away or things that are gonna endanger my mental health. For example, I have a three-year-old and he has access to an iPad. He calls it his iPad, it's mine, I had it first, okay. Um, I'm gonna be careful about when I'm taking that iPad away because there are some times when I need to like get stuff done and that iPad makes it possible, right? So if I need to make a video like this or if I need to do something where I, I need him to be occupied, I'm not gonna put myself in the position where the iPad is taken away. I'm also not gonna put myself in a position where I say that the iPad is going on a vacation and the iPad doesn't go on a vacation. Because what I'm doing then is I'm setting up a scenario where the child doesn't know if I'm being serious or not. And this can cause the child to engage in more challenging behavior. So it's kind of upping the ante, right? So if you're telling me that my punishment is going to be 25 push-ups, but like you've never made, you've said that, you said that last week, and last week you didn't make me do anything. And this week you're saying, well, if you don't do that, you're gonna get 25 push-ups, or if you do that, you're getting 25 push-ups. Guess what, I'm probably not gonna believe you because you said it last week and it didn't happen. So we need to be careful that when we have punishments and when we have consequences, that they're specific and that they are available. Same thing with reinforcement. So if we say, Johnny, you know, you if you do 20 minutes of classwork, then I'm gonna give you 10 minutes on the iPad. We need to make sure that the iPad is available and that he's gonna get 10 minutes on it because if his sister is using that for schoolwork and he's not gonna have access to it, then that reinforcement is not gonna work. He's not gonna do, he's not gonna engage in that positive behavior if the reinforcement doesn't show up um, quickly and efficiently, okay? So we need to make sure as parents and as the adults in the scenario that what we're saying, that we're offering things that are valid, um, that, that we're offering things that are acceptable and appropriate, um, and that we can follow through with them. At the end of the day, it comes to follow through. So if I'm, offer, if I'm saying that you're going to get 20 Skittles and I only have 10, I should probably only offer you 10 Skittles, right? Because we want to build that trust. The foundation of good behavior is really, it's really trust. Now, as a mom, that could be hard because I know my son trusts me and I know he loves me more than anybody else, supposedly. But sometimes for me, he's really challenging. Um, but a lot of that comes to what he's allowed to do when he's with me. I'm probably a little bit more lenient than everybody else. So that's something for me to consider in my how my behavior affects his behavior, okay? So one parent to another, you can do this. I know it's not easy. Um, but you can do this. So I'm gonna continue sharing videos and I hope you find them helpful. Good luck.